my name is Eva and welcome to this channel. And today we're going to be talking about low sexual desire, which, just getting it out off the top, is normal. What is low sexual desire? It's basically when you don't want to have sex. You aren't fantasizing about sex, you aren't getting aroused, you aren't wanting to get sex, you aren't initiating sex with your partner or partners. And in the sex positive bubble, there's a lot of emphasis on being very sexual and you should be wanting to have sex. And that isn't always the reality. The reality is that your sex drive ebbs and flows throughout your life throughout weeks, months, years, and that is totally, totally normal. So we're gonna be talking about that today and what you can do about it if you're experiencing low desire. Before I get started, I do also want to differentiate between low sexual desire and asexuality. So asexuality is a sexual orientation where individuals feel no sexual desire or uh, low levels of sexual desire. It's a spectrum like a lot of things and they don't feel distressed about it. They're just like, this is how my human exists. I just don't feel sexual desire or attraction. And that is different from low sexual desire where you may have previously had sexual desire, a sex drive, and then you no longer do and it makes you feel distressed. You're like, I would like to want to get sexy. Um, what's going on? That is low sexual desire. So I talked a little bit in the intro about how sexual desire can ebb and flow throughout your lifetime. And this can be caused by a bunch of things. Changes in medication, your menstrual cycle, seasons changing, changes in relationships, whether it's romantic and sexual relationships or just relationships in your life, life transitions, and a stress. So stress is one of the biggest factors that is related to low sexual desire. And that makes sense. If you are really stressed out at work or in other areas of your life, your brain is going to be totally focused on managing that stress and distracted and impacts your emotions and your thought patterns and you end up really not wanting to get sexy. And as we know, stress fluctuates throughout our lives and there are periods where our stress is really intense and periods where it's less intense and that impacts your desire. And part of the reason I'm talking about this is because a really cool study out in University of British Columbia in Canada that is doing research on low desire and they've launched a campaign called Debunking Desire, all about stress and low desire and sharing this with the world because this is important research that people should know about. Normalizing how common fluctuations in sexual desire are and low desire are in particular for women, one in three women will experience low desire in their lifetime and doing really amazing work. So I'm really thankful for them for doing this and for partnering with me too to share the message with you. So let's get into the tips. What do you do if you are experiencing low sexual desire. My first tip is to be compassionate with yourself. This happens. You are not broken or weird or gross. So many people go through this in their lifetime. It's okay for you to not want to have sex right now. It also doesn't mean that you don't love or care about your partner. We have this idea around sexuality that how our relationship is and how the sex is is directly related and if you have a good relationship you have good sex if you have a bad relationship you have bad sex and that's not true there are lots of bad relationships you have people with great sex and um and that's the same with lots of great relationships that don't have sex so they're not always real they're not always directly one-to-one -one related they impact each other but it's not a direct situation so and still love your partner a whole bunch and not want to get sexy with them. In terms of if you're feeling low desire, you can take this opportunity to nourish other areas of your life. Take your friends on friend dates. Be extra gentle and kind to yourself. Try new things. It is okay to take a break from sex. And with that, if you are in a long-term partnership, you don't owe your partner sex. Let's say it all together. You. Don't owe your partner sex. You never do. You never, you don't, don't ever owe them sex. And if they are making you feel guilty or 
hard for me to have sex, and that is not okay. It's not okay. They need to respect your boundaries and what you need right now. Their needs do not override your needs. In terms of if you do want to foster intimacy with them or experience sexuality with them, there are ways that you can do that that don't involve sex. First tip, masturbation. Your partner can masturbate. Totally fine. You can be a part of that. You can pick toys that they use to masturbate. You can pick their erotic content like fan fiction or books or porn if you want. You can cuddle after they've masturbated. You can talk about it a little bit if you want. You can have naked cuddles if you want. You can have baths with them. You can try new activities together with them. And the last tip is around stress because it is one of the biggest factors in contributing to low desire. And you can manage your stress in a lot of different ways. You can kind of take stock of what's going on in your life. Be like, okay, I have really busy work time for the next couple months and that's kind of what's happening. Sometimes you can do things about that, like delegating or getting more support, getting a change of scenery, kind of switching things around. There are ways that you can reduce stress and sometimes there's not a lot you can do and you really just gotta be compassionate with yourself. You can also talk to a counselor if you want to reduce your stress. You can go to the gym if that reduces your stress. And one of the main tips that Dr. Lori Brado and her team at UBC share is mindfulness. So there's so much research on the benefits of mindfulness um, and this also extends to sexuality. Dr. Lori Brado and her team have done a whole bunch of work on mindfulness and sexuality. So that can be one tool in your arsenal in decreasing your stress and potentially increasing your desire to have sex. That is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to learn more about low sexual desire, I will link Dr. Lori Brado's team at UBC. They have a really great website called debunkingdesire.com. They have a great FAQ page. They also have an awesome video if you want to check that out for more information. In terms of updates from me, I recently launched a sex research newsletter. Uh, so if you like this kind of stuff, if you like learning about sex research, you can find that on Patreon. My first issue is out now and it includes studies on porn, polyamory, and sex robots. <laughs> I've also launched a like holiday sponsorship, friendship tier for the Patreon, where if you pay $5 instead of three, you can send me an email to a friend or just somebody else who wants to be on the newsletter who doesn't have the money to be on the newsletter and I will send it to them too. So I will link all the things in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Like this video if you like it. Subscribe and turn on the bell if you aren't already and follow me on Instagram where I am very active sharing all the stuff. But that's all for me today. Have a lovely day.